Sam, I was going to ask you about the tight ends. I know in fall camp that was maybe a, a big question mark. How do you feel like like those guys have done? And maybe you could just say something about each guy. What, how do you think they've done? I think they're doing a really good job. I, you know, uh, we actually on our good tape um, uh, yesterday, uh, we actually showed Hudson. You know, he took a couple of really nice shots from the guys at A&M and gave the ball to the official, got up, went to his alignment and assignment, and, and uh, went on about his business. Uh, that's a redshirt freshman, and, and uh, you know, he's getting tougher. He's getting better. Blake Kern, I think, has uh, done a nice job as well. Uh, caught a very important pass uh, down to about the one or two yard line against A&M, doing a better job blocking. Uh, both of them have, obviously, we can approve and they know it, but they're working off a of hard. I've been uh, very happy with those two guys. Uh, obviously, Blake Kern is probably three on the depth chart or excuse me, uh, Bl Blaine Toll is probably three on the depth chart right now. Uh, not getting him quite as much reps as we anticipated, but he's doing a nice job on special teams. Touch. Yeah, Sam, I was wondering, what, what, how have you adjusted the practice schedule this week with the players being off on Tuesday for the election? Well, we, uh, we came in, uh, we got home nice and early at 2.30 in the morning, but look on the bright side, we gained an hour. And so we were obviously much fresher than we would have been if we lost an hour. And we came right back up here as a coaching staff, uh, graded the tape, met, did everything that we normally do, uh, except uh, we practiced last night. So we started our meetings at 4.30 and we practiced, uh, which would, would we call it a Monday practice. We practiced last night, it went very well. Uh, we were ready for that practice because in our off week, uh, we started with Tennessee. We wanted to have that uh, practice ready to go um, because we knew they, they uh, weren't gonna play, they were off. So we, we had all the film uh, that they have shown this year and we had a nice, we did not put pads on last night and didn't want to do it back to back, um, but we'll be full pads today and Wednesday. And after the, after the day we get past the day, we'll go back to, you know, that will be off tomorrow, but we'll, we'll Wednesday will be Wednesday, Thursday will be Thursday, Friday, and so forth. Tom. Hey, Sam, I had a couple of things I wanted to ask. First, an overview of Tennessee, just kind of a scouting report on those guys. Second, your relationship with Jim Chaney, when it started, why did y'all hit it off, and um, how often y'all communicate these days? Well, Jim and I were both – I actually signed as well, but Jim Chaney is a Central Missouri State mule, and – I signed with Central Missouri State too. We both graduated. He looks much older than I do, but we both graduated the same year in high school. And uh, so I've known him, you know, we both recruited St. Louis at different times and we'd get together and go out and obviously go eat. And, uh, and uh, so, I uh, got to know him and I went to the convention. We'd gotten fired at North Carolina and he, I saw him, he, I was going into the restroom. He's coming out and he said, Hey, I want to talk to you. Said, Hey, we're going to lose our line coach. You'd like to come work with me at uh, Tennessee. I did enjoyed it. <clears throat> at the end of that year, we got fired. Um, Jim and I were fortunate enough to come to the university of Arkansas and we spent I think two years together, Jim left, went to Pittsburgh. Uh, then when uh, I got the job at Georgia, uh, he and I uh, reunited there at Georgia and he was there three of my, three of my four years at Georgia. And then he left and went to Tennessee. I coached at Tennessee, obviously, um, and, had a, and had a wonderful year that year I was at Tennessee. As far as they go, uh, offensively, they, they have a very talented offensive line, a huge offensive line. Uh, they have a really good back uh, in gray. Actually, they have two with him and Chandler. 
uh, and uh, Garantino is, uh, uh, as a veteran guy, he's played in 39 games there at Tennessee, so a veteran quarterback. Palmer is a, one of their elite receivers that they have, along with Jones and, and uh, Keaton. On defense, they're an SEC-looking defense. They're big, you know, they're front three. Uh, they're in a three or four-man line, but they're front three with Butler, uh, Solomon, and Bumpus. Uh, Bumpus are, are uh, very talented kids that can run. I think the key um, to their defense is uh, Henry Toho, Toho and uh, he's leading their team in, in tackles, but he's, I mean, he's as good a linebacker is in the SEC and probably the nation. In the back end, they're very physical, they can cover. Uh, this is a really good football team that looks like an SEC football team. And Coach Pruitt and those guys have done an outstanding job getting them to this point. You know, early in the year, they were on an eight-game winning streak, counting six from last year. Uh, so, and they ran into Georgia and Alabama and Kentucky and, and um, really Georgia and Alabama. You know, those are the lead, elite, elite teams. And certainly Kentucky is one of the elite teams of the SEC as well. Nate? Yeah, Sam, as far as the depth in the secondary, since you've had a couple of opt-outs and you had the game with, with Catalan having to sit, just how do you feel it's it's come through for you so far? Well, I think they've done a really good job. You know, obviously losing Catalan the other night, it showed. Um, we had certainly practiced without him and those things of that nature, but he he, he – um, He's probably as important as anybody we have on the defense. And uh, he had been playing really well and just an unfortunate uh, situation that he wasn't able to play in uh, the rest of the second quarter and in the, in the second half. But uh, he's very valuable back there. We, we, we learned a lesson there about, you know, uh, to have another guy in his position. Uh, ready to go. Slusher was a guy that we felt like could do that. Blair was a guy, but of course, Slush was uh, ankle. He had an ankle injury that we didn't know for sure if he was going to be able to play or not going into the game. So uh, we're pretty healthy right now. And so I think we're going to be okay there. Trey Biddy. Yeah, Coach, I was wondering if anything jumped out to you on film rewatching the game that maybe you thought was different when you were watching it live? You know, Trey, uh, we didn't tackle well. You know, um, third down, we had some MAs, you know, some missed assignments on some coverages. Um, we got baited a couple of times in the deep third at corner that, you know, we saw on tape. I did think that our D-line played better than what I thought was thinking during the game. I thought that they uh, – and I thought Julius Coates had his best game, you know. And, of course, John Marshall is a guy that we certainly can count on. Uh, but as the game wore on, I think our tackling was, was worse, you know. We missed too many tackles. Uh, on offense, uh, We, you know, obviously we left too many points out there. You know, we, we're not a team – we have to win first down. If we get behind the sticks, you know, we have a hard time of converting first downs at that point. And certainly our red zone offense uh, was not up to standard. And we've got to score seven instead of uh, attempting three uh, when we get down close and when we get in field goal range. Nikki. Coach, a lot of people are commenting about how Hudson Henry looks like he's coming into his own and, and, and starting to really take over the role. What have you thought of his performances? I thought he had his best performance uh, Saturday. And I, I'm just talking about a physicality, a toughness stand, standard, you know, standpoint. Um, like I said earlier, he took a couple of nice shots, you know, the best they, they could give him. And got the ball official, got lined up, got ready to play, was not shaken, you know, wasn't shook. I don't know which, which way you're supposed to say that. But um, I do know this, that, you know, earlier in the year, um, that would have affected him. So he's maturing, he's growing, he understands. 
and he's a weapon. He's he's really perfect for the, for our our offense. Howdy. Hey, Coach, I'm curious if you could expound on what you see from Tennessee's past defense. And also, Felipe's been really good on the road, but what can you do to, you know, maybe get him into a little bit more of a rhythm at home? Well, we, you know, the first game out of the, I think we played Georgia at home, which, you know, they certainly have a, uh, as good a defense as there is in the country. And, in the second game against Ole Miss, I think he probably played pretty well. Uh, second home game. We've been on the road three times and home twice. Um, so I'm not really concerned about getting him going or anything like that. I think he's played good ball for us. Dudley. Coach, obviously not being able to go see recruits uh, is, a, is a big thing. It's been a challenge. But what have been some of the other challenges during this time, during the season that, you know, have made recruiting a little tougher or a little different? You know, we, we have several guys that are uh, committed to us. Um, we haven't had any many, you know, in the last couple of months. We had a, we we talked about it in our staff meeting, and right now everything's kind of on hold. Um, I think a lot of the kids are waiting to see, you know, if there's going to be official type visits in January. You know, we have not, from what I understand, we haven't got that ruling yet, and uh, so I still think there's going to be a whole bunch of them sign early, but. There's that last group of guys that are going, you know, I don't want to sign someplace I've never been to. And I, you know, heck, I don't blame them. Uh, but we're in a little bit of a, like a holding pattern, it seems like to me, where we're trying to attack is the 22 class. You know, we're, we've got a, a pretty good number in the 19 or in the, in the 21 class, but we're trying to go after the 22 class, particularly in the state of Arkansas. Is there a way to, to kind of get to, to the kids the atmosphere? You know, obviously, kid come to the games, but how are you trying to get that across? Well, we're sending out all kinds of stuff all the time, you know, um, trying to talk about, you know, what we've done and who we have and awards they're getting and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, even the atmosphere is not the atmosphere, you know, unless you go to A&M and then you got a pretty good atmosphere, you know, down there. But uh, uh, it's hard to sell right now, to be honest with you. We're, and they can't come and, and all those things, you know, you hopefully they watch it on TV and get a feeling about who we are. You know, right now we're trying to sell ourselves and, and uh, are we, is our program better than what it has been and all those things? And that's up to the individual on what you think about that. But um, we're trying to head in the right direction and play good football to give them a reason to come to Arkansas. Thanks, Coach. Jordan? Hey, Coach. A couple of weeks ago, you mentioned getting off to that fast start meant doing things a little differently in pregame warmups or even during the week, what are some of those things that y'all have done differently that help make that fast start a success on Saturday? Well, you know, everything, the first things we do at practice, regardless of whatever it may be, we, we have really, really emphasized, all right, so we're starting. We're going to start on Saturday. It, it, was, our, it was one of our team goals. Uh, to start fast, start fast, start fast. That did not necessarily just mean to the offense. You know, our defense uh, got them off the field and we went down and, and scored immediately. So, uh, you know, it's like if you're boxing, you know, and I don't know much about boxing. I've been in a few fights in my day, but I know you probably want to throw the first punch or you ain't got to show a guy how tough you are and take a few shots, you know. You probably ought to throw the first punch, and we talked about that. And and uh, I don't know if we did or not, but I do know that that was our mentality going into the game. And, and and you know, we have fastball starts every day. We, you know, not every day, but on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, we, we emphasize our individual because it's the beginning. We emphasize our ball security because it's, the beginning of practice. We emphasize stretch because it's the beginning of practice. 
But what we've done in pregame is we've gone faster. We haven't changed it, but it's more it's it's a more physical pregame than what we've done. And and uh, so we're going to try the same thing, Jordan, and see if it works this week. Troy. Yeah, hey, Coach. Um, it seemed like Rakeem had one of his better games against Texas A&M. Um, you know, I know he's been banged up this year, but I'm curious how you think he's uh, doing so far, kind of coming after injury and if, you know, he's back to full potential. Troy, did you say Rakeem? Yeah, I did. Sorry. Um, yeah, I think he did. I mean, there's a lot of holes there, too. You know, our offensive line did a nice job, and, and um, Traylon Smith came in, and, and he ran hard. Uh, I think I think I think Rakeem's just going to get better and better each week. I do. You know, he's healthy now. Um, he knows that he can make some guys more people miss. You know, in open space, and I think he's going to concentrate on some of that and get better. I, you know, I loved his attitude and 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 how hard he ran, and I I think he'll I think he'll even get better now that I believe that he's healthy. Tom. Um. You obviously know the concepts or the philosophy of a Jim Chaney offense. Uh, what you see from Tennessee this season, does that kind of fall in line with what you know, or are they doing some different stuff too? Well, Jim's an offensive line coach. I mean, uh, you know, Jim taught me a lot about offensive line play. And uh, so, you know, he wants to run the football, you know, and he believes – I don't want to speak for him, but – I've been with him three schools, you know. He, he believes that running the football and physical play is how you win in the SEC. And, and uh, so as you look at their team now, they built around that offensive line, big, physical, five-star offensive lineman. And uh, he's turned around and handing the football off. And if you don't – if you're not able to stop him, he'll never throw a pass. I mean, he just won't. Uh, He's trying to win the game. He's trying to beat you up, and that's what he's been every every place I've ever been with him. And I really don't see any difference in his philosophy watching all their games uh, this season. Sam, I had a couple of questions. Uh, one, Dorian, how did he handle his snaps that he got this past weekend? Is he going to continue kind of getting more snaps moving forward? And then how did Bumper do in his uh, first game back? You know, Andrew, I don't, you know, um, Dorian, I'm not going to tell you that we, you know, I talked to him last night and he, he was very, very happy that he played. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that I felt like he was 100% ready to play, but when are you in game five, you know? Um, but I'm glad that he was glad that he played because I think it, it, it gave him some confidence and I think it'll help him for this week. Uh, certainly, uh, we're going to watch him uh, today. We did yesterday and, and, of course, on Wednesday to see where he is physically. But uh, I was glad he played. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't think he played, you know, like he – like he was full speed, but I was glad he got the opportunity to play. And then you asked me about somebody else. Uh, Bumper, how did he do his first game back? Oh, Bumper. Yeah. Bump, bump. You know, I thought he, I thought he flew around to the ball. You know, we got to give him a little deeper in some coverages. At times, um, we bit a little bit up on some play actions and things of that nature, but. Uh, he came out of the game well, and I was glad to have him back. He's a good football player, great kid, and uh, we need guys like that on our football team, and we need bumper pull, and we're glad he was back. Time for a few. <clears throat> Got time for a few more. Let me know in the chat, Bob. <coughs> hey, hey, Sam, I wanted to ask you about, about Jim Chaney again. So um, how often do you guys talk? Um, when was the last time you talked, and do you cut off – you know, communication when you're playing. And um, I don't – you didn't go to Central Missouri, did you? Did Pitt, Pittsburgh State stole your – then how did you and Jim connect? Did you – were you on a recruiting trip together? How did you guys meet? Uh, I talked to Jim about once a week and uh, have not spoke with him this week, but not that it matters. I mean, 
he not going to tell me anything. I'm not certainly not telling him anything. You know, uh, I love the guy. He's a dear friend of mine. Um, you know, he's from Holden, Missouri, and I'm from Grove, Oklahoma, and I signed with the Mules, but that, they were NCAA Division II, and Pittsburgh State was NAIA Division One, and so I could get out of my signing deal or whatever. It's, honestly, Warrensburg, Missouri was too far from home for me. So was Pittsburgh State. It was 70 miles from my house, but I decided to go ahead and go anyway. And uh, so, uh, you know, in the coaching profession, you just meet people that you like. And I met him in recruiting. You know, he was recruiting. I was recruiting. He was at Purdue at the time. And uh, we had common, both small town kids. And we had a lot of com common uh, interests. And um, I respected him deeply as a coach and as a man. And so... We went out and had had a good time and got got to know each each other better and that's when it started and then I was very fortunate that he that he recommended that Coach Dooley hire me at Tennessee because you know I didn't have a job and Tennessee's a really good place and and was able to do that and then of course come to Arkansas which certainly was beneficial to me as you look at me now. Terry. You're muted, Terry. I'm sorry. Uh, the other night, uh, Felipe seemed to be holding the ball just a, just a little bit long. Is, he, is, is it a matter of, of him just waiting on receivers or just trying to make a play, trying extra, or, or what's kind of going on there, I guess? Well, I think he's holding the ball a little bit too long. And, uh, you know, he's waiting on his receivers. You know, I don't, I don't mind him. You know, there's situations where you certainly don't want to take a sack. But I, I'm more concerned about him taking hits, you know. And uh, anytime a quarterback's holding the ball, that means one good thing. The protection's pretty good. And another bad thing, we're not getting open. And uh, so, you know, we've got to keep the protection men uh, pretty pretty solid, and we've got to get open, and he's got to see his reads probably a little bit faster and get rid of the ball. But I'm going to sit here and say I'm disappointed in the way he's playing because he's playing pretty good. He, You know, he's tough, and and I'm, I'm not going to be too critical about him holding the ball too much, really. Russell. Coach, what does Jalen mean to this team as a leader on the defense? And then also, what do you tell him about that hit to where he keeps his physicality? Because obviously that's kind of been setting the tone for the defense in some of the games. Well, he has. Blair has. Joe has. Um, but he he's, uh, you know, like I say, he's, a, he's, he's the most valuable guy we have back there. I mean, he's he runs it. He's uh, aware of, of what guy, teams are doing uh, because he watches a tremendous amount of film. So does the whole secondary back there. But uh, he's very, very, very valuable to our football team as a young man and as a player. And uh, so, obviously, you want to keep those guys on the field as much as you can. But, you know, he's got to – he, he, he tried to knock a guy out a little bit too much for me. You know, he's going to have to slow down and wrap up a little bit every now and then. He'll, he'll miss some tackles that uh, certainly uh, you want him to make. But you don't want to take that physicality away from him because he'll also kind of knock you out, you know. So we, we'd like to keep the knockout part and uh, maybe wrap up a little bit more. Last one, Tom. Yeah, I had a question for you about Jeremy Pruitt. Um, uh, how much you guys have crossed paths in, in the past and also what they're doing defensively, does that kind of look like it's from the saving tree when you, when you look at their principles? Jeremy Pruitt is a really good person. I really like him. And, you know, I didn't know him as well. He, had, he was leaving Georgia whenever I got there. And, uh, but, man, what a defense they had when he was there. And, uh, 
you know, obviously I've had some friends work, work for him, work with him. And, uh, they're very complimentary about the way, you know, he treats them and, and, uh, but I've had some talks with him over different things, uh, over COVID and different things of that nature. And he just a really pleasant man. And, uh, uh, you know, he's a high school coach as well, so we have some common things in our in our background. Uh, but uh, I'm really happy for him, and they're doing a great job over there, and and I have uh, highest respect for him.